Hello, this is a video comparing a variety of short row turns in garter stitch. So I've started my base stitches here in the light and I'm going to work my short rows in the um, dark color. So we're going to work a short row, the first one here before the last four stitches, and then one here, here, and every four stitches. So the one we're going to work over here is just going to be a turn without a wrap. And then we'll work a turn with a wrap that we're not going to pick up on the return row. A turn with a wrap that we'll pick up and conceal. A yarn over short row. A Japanese short row. And a German short row. So the first thing is I'm going to knit all the way over to here where we're going to do the first short row turn. And I'll save you waiting and we'll just skip straight to that so here we go we're gonna skip okay here we're coming up on the last couple of stitches here's the last one so at this point we're just going to turn so that means we're just gonna turn our work just like this and I'm going to knit back over to here to where we started So it's just a turn, just like that. I'm going to knit back to the other end and then back over to here where there's four stitches remaining and I'll see you back here in just a second. Okay, here we are coming up to where we're going to make our turn. Here's the previous turn where we didn't do any wrap or anything, we just turned. For this one we're going to do a wrap and turn. Now there's a lot of people will say different things about wrap and turn. Some people say bring the yarn forward, slip the stitch, take the yarn back. Or they can say slip the stitch, bring the yarn forward, take it back. And that's what I do. It doesn't really matter. But the end result is that this stitch right here, this last stitch that you did not work, gets a yarn necklace. It gets a yarn wrapped around its neck like this. And then when you turn and you work back, that stitch now has, you can see it right here, pulling around its neck. See that? And then we're going to work back and then we'll come up. Maybe I'll just work these back. We're getting fewer stitches now. The reason I'm using two colors is because when we do the very last row which conceals the wraps, I'm going to go back to the off-white and it will show us any variations in how these turns look in garter stitch and I think it will be quite fascinating. I'm looking forward to seeing what it looks like. And then I'll show you my preferences. So that last one was 20 stitches over. Now we're going to do 16 because we're doing multiples of four. So now we've got two turns. We've got this turn here. Here's the turn here, but we wrapped that stitch so it makes a gap after the stitch, but the turn is actually right here where my fingernail is. So now we're going to work over 16. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. We could make a song. Fifteen, sixteen. Here's the previous wrapped stitch. Here's the previous turn. It's four stitches over. So we're going to do the same exact thing because when we come back on the final row on this wrapped stitch, we're not going to conceal it. This one we will. See the yarns wrapped around there? You can see it going around the neck. And then we'll knit all the way back. Okay, so we're working back. The next type of um, short row turn we're going to do will be a yarn over. 
It's a very interesting one. It's one of my favorites. Each has its place, really, depending on what kind of fabric and what the design is that you're working. I like uh, yarn overs for short row heels. For me, they make a tighter join. So we're going to work over 12. Twelve. In this case, what we do is, here's our last turn here with the, the turns here, the wrapped stitches here. We just turn our work, braiding it back, and we put the left needle under here and pull the yarn up. Now, if you're a thrower, it just means that when you go to knit, normally you would knit like this with the yarn in the back. If you're a thrower, you just put the needle under here, and then you're going to throw and it makes a yarn over and a stitch. If you're a continental knitter, you put the yarn in your left hand, again the needle behind the yarn and knit the first stitch. So either way the yarn's behind the needle and you knit the first stitch and what that does is makes the yarn over a nice tight one there right before the first stitch. Then the last, uh, next to the last segment that we're going to do is Japanese short row turns. These are kind of fun too. I used to be really fascinated with them. And for this you're going to need a stitch marker, a removable stitch marker. So we're going to move over to where there's eight. One, two. Eight. We turn the work, put your stitch marker over your yarn, over the working yarn, let it just hang there. You can either fasten it or not, and you're going to knit back and just let it be over the stitch marker. It's right there. And then the very last one that we're going to do is called a German short row turn. I like it too. I like all of these. Um, I switch back and forth depending on what I'm doing. In garter stitch, I'll show you my favorite though after we get to the portion of working it, working that last white row. Okay, so here we go for the German short row turn. We're going to work over four stitches. Now, if you've noticed on these others, like the wraps, they affect the stitch after the turn. And you'll see that the uh, Japanese short row turn will affect the stitch after, and the yarn over will also affect the stitch after. German short rows also affect the stitch after, but they affect it because what you're going to do is you're going to work that stitch, then you turn, and with the yarn in the front, you slip this over to the right needle at the same time pull the yarn up. So he, this was the knitted stitch, the last knitted stitch. We slip it over here. This is the stitch below. When you pull the yarn up, it pulls the two legs up from the stitch below. And that's called a double stitch. And then you knit back. Now what we're going to do is we're going to change to our white yarn and we're going to work across and see what these look like. We'll probably work two rows. The first row with the stitches on the needle, you won't be able to see much. So we're going to work to the German short row first. So we work the first four stitches and then we'll encounter the double stitch. There's the double stitch and you can tell because it's got the twist at the top between this stitch and the stitch below. You're going to knit through both legs as if knitting two together. Then we're going to work over to the Japanese short row. And 
and here it is, and you take that stitch marker and you just pull that loop up and put it on the left needle. Okay, it's just put on the left needle. Then you knit it together with the following stitch as a knit two together. That's what closes the gap. Then we're going to knit over to the yarn over, turn. There's the yarn over following the stitch. We knit the stitch and then you knit the yarn over with the stitch following it. So that closes that gap. Then we're going to work over to our first or actually the second wrap and turn. Here's the necklace. Let me point it out. Here's the necklace going around the stitch. Sometimes it can be hard to see. You have to kind of train your eyes. These are what normal stitches look like with the pearl bump below and garter stitch. This one has two yarns going through it. This is the pearl bump. This is the wrap. So you're going to take your left needle, go underneath the wrap, through the stitch as if to knit, and pull the yarn through both stitches. Sometimes you have to practice that before it feels comfortable. And this will be the next um, wrap and turn. And we're not going to pick it up. Here's the wrap. Let me point it out again. See, here's the pearl bumps below the stitches. Here's this one's pearl bump. Here's the wrap here. So we're just going to knit right over it. We're just going to ignore it. And then the last one is where we just turned and we didn't do anything special. We're just going to knit right across that. Now I'm going to stop the video just for a second and I'm going to knit all the way back and then we'll take a really close look at this. So hold on. I'll be right back. Okay, so now I've knitted all the way back. So we have one white garter ridge. I'm just going to move this onto the cable so it's more flexible and we'll go down in magnification. And just we'll get a general look at it first. We can see what short rows do. Get this here so we can look at it. Okay, get my needle flipped around so it's not trying to go off the, the desk. Okay, so this row came across and ended here. The next row came across and ended right here. The following garter ridge came over and ended here. Then this one came and ended here, here, and here. Looking at it from a distance, they all look really good. You really can't tell much difference. So let's take a close-up look. Here is the first one we did where we just turned. And really, unless you pull this apart, you're not going to notice a hole there. In very small, fine fingering weight yarn, I will use this technique because it really, you do not notice that hole unless you pull on this yarn. The next one over is where, right here, let me get my pointer. So the next row comes and ends right here. Right here. This is where we did um, the wrap. We wrapped this stitch but we did not pick up the wrap on the return. So here's the wrap. This is my favorite for garter stitch because it just looks like the row just comes over and ends right there. Actually, it's right here, I'm sorry. Comes over and ends right here. This is the wrap that's going around the stitch. Then over here, one, two, three, four, on here, this one, we came over and we wrapped the stitch and on this stitch we concealed the wrap. So it pulls it up like this. Can you see that? It also looks very good. But you can see part of the yarn here. Can you see this where it's been pulled up? So this is that uh, wrap. It's pulled up and comes back around here on the back side. We'll look at the back side in a second. Here is the yarn over. 
short row. It looks exactly the same as this one. You can see this part coming up right here. The yarn over is actually behind here. This is the yarn over. It's behind the stitch. Over here, the wrap is right here. It's behind the stitch. See, here's the stitch. Here's the wrap. The yarn over, and here's the wrap behind it. Then we come over to the German short row. It's right here, and it produces a similar effect. You get that wrap around the back side. And then we come over, I mean, so that's the Japanese short row. You're getting the wrap. It's exactly the same. This and this and this are exactly the same. Just different ways of doing it. Here's the German short row turn, and lo and behold, it does the same thing. Here's the wrap behind the stitch. Now let's take a look at the other side. Here's where we just turned. We didn't do anything special. And then here is where we made this wrap. You can see the wrap, but we did not pick it up, so it's still going around the stitch. Here is where we've picked up the wrap, and you can see what it did is it comes up. This is the wrap. It comes up and goes around like this, like a reverse C. This is it right here. See it pull? Then that's for the wrap and turn. We go over here. This is the uh, yarn over. Makes the reverse C. Exactly the same thing. Can you see it right here? Then the Japanese is right here. Makes that reverse C. Exactly the same. From the back side, you cannot tell the difference. You Well, you really can't from the front either. And then the German short row turn is right here. It does look a little different. There's no C on the back of the work. You see that? Here it is right here, but there's really no C. So there you have it. All of them would be acceptable. Some people like to perform one more than the other. It depends on what you like to do, what you feel comfortable doing, but they all look good. If you like my instruction methods, please subscribe to my YouTube videos, share my videos, hit the thumbs up down there, make a comment. I love to hear from my viewers. I also have a Ravelry group. It's called Knitting with Suzanne Bryan. I have a Facebook group called Knitting with Suzanne Bryan. Be sure to join both of those. All of my stuff is educational. Happy knitting!